Hi, my name is Michael Ayling. I am an anaesthetist on the east coast of Australia and I am producing an updated video of the cleaning tutorial that I did for the reusable elastomeric respirators. Um, updating for a couple of reasons. The one, the video quality will be better on this and also uh, there's some clarification with regard to some of the cleaning solutions. You might also notice that I have a beard. Uh, that's because we don't have any COVID patients at any of the institutions I currently work at in Australia, which is wonderful. Uh, the minute anyone comes in, uh, the beard's gone because you're not going to get a decent mask seal with a beard. Uh, you might also notice I'm not wearing my scrub shirt and I've removed objects around me which give you any indication as to where I am. I work at six different institutions and a number of private rooms and I'm not representing any of them. I'm not speaking on behalf of all of them. This is just made on my own account just as a public service for those uh, in and without Australia uh, who might need some tips on using these respirators if you've decided to use them. Uh, uh, and also I want to make something else absolutely clear. Some people have gone to the press, the mainstream press and others decrying their hospital's lack of PPE. I cannot speak for other countries. All I can say is that my knowledge and experience in Australia is that nobody really foresaw to the extent that it, had, that it was thought to occur, the requirement for PPE, and there were another, um, a number of other issues with regard to the supply of PPE. And I really don't think it's helpful to point the finger at your hospital administrations and say that they were negligent or derelict or anything. Look, in my experience, they've been doing the best they can with what they had, and they've been quite gracious and accommodating to staff members efforts to protect themselves and each other whilst maintaining the protection of their staff. There's been a few a few bad apples in a couple of departments, especially in, in the Sydney area, but for the most part they've been pragmatic and cooperative and we're grateful for that. Uh, we're all grown-ups, we're all scientists, we're able to make decisions and uh, assess evidence and make sure that we protect each other and our staff. So moving on, I've looked at some of the literature in the journals as well as 3M's published literature uh, in cleaning and decontaminating these, these respirators. Now while they were designed for industrial use, they have been used before for medical uses. In particular, the 7500 series half face have re been re used for Ebola pandemics and for other uses, um, influenza pandemic or epidemic in 2009, for example. So there is precedent. And so the documentation that's provided has some, some experience behind it. So I'm not going to go into doffing the respirator, um, that's in another video. Suffice it to say that doffing should never be done in a hurry. The action's all finished and one of your chief risk times for self-contamination is during doffing. So that's not what I'm going to now. I'm just going to the point where you've doffed your respirator and if you're using it, your headset, and it's in a dish in the sluice room waiting to be cleaned. So first of all, you need to protect yourself. There isn't an aerosol risk from this, but there is a droplet risk from splashing if you have been splashed and the respirator is contaminated. So you have to be careful of that. So I would recommend that you wear gloves. I'm not gonna show you disposable PPE here because I'm not gonna use it up and you can have to waste it. A full face shield, preferably disposable. And if you wish, also a, um, a standard droplet surgical mask and a standard plastic apron. Uh, and I would assume that most people after doing an intubation or involve, heavily involved procedure with a COVID patient would have a shower afterwards anyway. So, so here we go, we've donned our cleaning PPE. So we've got a multi-stage process. We'll start with the headset if you use it. Make sure the battery port is closed or if you're using the later model, then it doesn't have a battery port and it's much more water resistant. Then take an antimicrobial wipe. This one's been sitting out for a bit, it's dry. And main, give it a good wipe over all the surfaces. You must have one minute contact time to deactivate any viral particles on there. One minute contact time. The next session, section is to remove your filter cartridges. Now I've done reviews of the other cartridges. This is the 6035, you can use the 6038. 
the American version of the 6038 is a 7093. They're different model numbers because they're tested to different standards. These are tested to an Australian New Zealand standard. The other ones, 7093, are tested to the NIOSH American standard. So again, carefully unscrew the cartridges, place them down. And then you're decontaminating your gloved hands. Pick these up with your gloved hands, wash them, wipe them, that is, sorry, carefully with maintaining at least a 60 second contact time. That's according to this recommendations on this particular substance here. And this is rated for up to, it's got herpes simplex, influenza, norovirus, 60 second contact time. And all the bacteria that they list, they say 60 second contact time. So it's just a long list of 60 seconds. Check your other brand, make sure that, they're, that you're adhering to their regulations to kill off, to, to, insofar as the virus is living at all, to deactivate a virus. So 60 seconds. There's nothing written about whether you should try and bunch it up and put it on the inside. I'm not really convinced it's necessary, uh, but if you wish you feel better doing that. But you must be very careful not to wet the inside of the filter cartridge. Inside there's a HEPA filter, and Part of its filtration depends on its maintenance of a static charge. If you moisten it, that static charge is, is very greatly reduced. And the static charge is important because that will trap viral particles within the matrix of the filter. The filter width is actually wider than the virus, and some people have said, oh, that's terrible, it's wider, they're all going to get through. No, they don't, because an aerosol spreads by Brownian motion, and the static charge actually impedes that. That's from 3M's literature and from another, from various literature sources. So this side of the filter is clean. It's all got your, it's got, it doesn't even have any expiratory particles from your own breath in there. Because as I'll show later on, there are two valves protecting the inside of this filter. The other side of the filter, which is around the S-bend, within the, behind the white section, but also behind that uh, gray section, that will have viral particles in there and if you, if you feel you know kind of freaked out knowing that they're there then um, I, I wouldn't um, but it, it's perfectly safe that they're stuck there they're not going off there they're not, not like a slime that's going to find its way out they're just stuck in there and they degrade over time and according to that Lancet article that was published a few months ago um, that was um, that was up to 48 hours I suppose on cardboard or the equipment so put them to one side to dry. The next section is to disassemble and clean the respirator itself. So there's only two things you need to disassemble. One is to remove the protective plate from the expiratory port. All this stuff under these surfaces is, is user side, so you really shouldn't be having to remove this uh, because you're going to soak it anyway. Okay? And then remove the in, inner face plate. You see there's three lugs in there? It's just pulls off. Okay, so you've got a valves on the inside of that, valves on the inside of that. So, so two, two valves on each side to protect the inside of the respirator from your exhalation. All the exhalation comes through this, out, out there, out there, and then down that hole. So, then take some water Heat it to no more than 49 or 50 degrees, okay? The reason why I remade this video, apart from quality issues and some extra references, is that I was emailed a source originally that, that said uh, at least 49 degrees. It's actually no great, no more than 49 degrees, and that's 120 Fahrenheit. So these are a five litre bucket. So mix this up, fill this up with just some detergent, enough to get a surfactant effect. Uh, it doesn't say what detergent, we just get you know, the 3M stuff from the tap, it has to just be surfactant because you're washing it, you're not decontaminating it. So, place the respirator into the bucket. And then, if it's really grossly soiled, like somebody has uh, coughed phlegm all over it, and you find it's adherent, it doesn't just wash off, you can get a, a soft brush and wipe, wipe that off with a brush, according to 3M, okay? And then, gently rinse that off under the tap. And until the detergent's all gone. Now the second stage is a bleach solution. So I've got here a reference which I'll put at the end, Disinfection of Reusable Elastomeric Respirators by Healthcare Workers, a Feasibility Study and Development of Standard Operating Procedures by uh, Bessesin and others in the American Journal of Infection Control. 
in 2015. Uh, this goes through essentially seeing what the error rate was for people uh, who were following an SOP in cleaning their respirators. They found that once they had a, a brief training session and uh, a printed uh, pr protocol, the error rate was zero. So, I mean, because I actually got a call from some of my other videos from a, a doctor in Scotland where they were having some issues with their hospital trust allowing them to use the elastomeric respirators respirators. Uh, some very condescending arguments were being put forth saying that you know you couldn't possibly get get the doffing procedures right and you're going to contaminate yourself and it's and it's the end of the world and they were, they had neurosurgeons neurosurgeons you know brain surgeons who uh, who they said weren't going to be able to work out a simple SOP which is um, well hubris comes to mind anyway so there's a variety of different ble bleach solutions used to decontaminate the respirator now the virus is extremely sensitive to bleach and uh, obviously that was in the news after my first edition of the video um, it suffice it to say that your own cells are also sensitive to bleach so uh, you must all maintain PPE for chemical purposes as well as for viral particles the solution of bleach that's quoted for various manufacturers of different respirators whether it's 3M, Scott or um, you know that Swedish brand Stormborg or something whatever it's called they vary from 200 parts per million all the way up to 5,000 parts per million. 5,000 parts per million is a half percent hypochlorite uh, solution, which is a, a huge, a very concentrated solution, and that would be 750 mils in seven liters of water. So that's not intended for soaking, immersing. That's intended for the kind of solution that's on a bleach wipe, like a Clorox wipe, that sort of thing. The solution that 3M quote is 30 mils of household bleach in seven liters of water. So that's, in this case, I don't know if you can see it on here, the detail, you know, 5.25% is what they quote as household bleach, but household bleach can vary from brand to brand. And so the, 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 um, the, the solution can, can, that you use will vary. So essentially it's not an exact thing, which really reflects how sensitive the, uh, the virus is to low percentages. So if you haven't got liquid bleach that you're going to mix in and you haven't got you know someone to measure it out, we use some, <coughs> there are different brands, this is the current brand, we haven't had a different brand before. We just throw a couple of these bleach tablets into the bucket, fill it up to just under five liters, just under because of the uh, displacement of the respirator itself. Take your bucket and place the respirator into the bucket. Make sure that you know, with a gloved hand it's, it's fully submerged for, for 120 seconds. Okay, you must have two minutes submersion time. If you're using a half face respirator, they will usually float. So you can use a McGill or other forceps to hold them, but you must keep them submerged and make sure the air pockets are, are also filled up with solution. After the two minutes has elapsed, remove your pieces and wash them under a tap. Uh, again, don't have a, the tap running very strongly because you'll splash yourself with bleach. So by this time, the, the virus particles are all decontaminated. Uh, so the 3M literature says that you can air dry it. But you notice there's quite a few nooks and crannies where um, water can accumulate there. So uh, those of us who have done this, we use a small towel, just the towels that you'll find in the change room, the shower towel, and towel dry them and then hold them up and then put them up, put them back together and then leave them up ready for your next task. I'll put the reference in the comments below and or in the notes below. And I hope this has been useful to you and good luck out there. Stay safe.